to mind was just driving in traffic over here. You know, here was this. Uh, I had I had to go somewhere. I had made a commitment. Uh, I was late and, and sort of resentful at my fiance for being about ten minutes late, even though it really wasn't her fault. And I would have been late anyway. And I, and I made the phone calls, but I felt this anxiety about having to get somewhere and be somewhere. And uh, part of me knew that well, that was just a projection. You know, I'm just it's not me that has to be anywhere. But at the same time, I still felt that. So. Um, I guess, you know, over the years, I'm, I'm just saying, like, what, and you don't give exercises or instructions a lot of times, um, you know. Anytime. Yeah. And that's interesting to me because I think people want to, you know, to know what to do in a situation like that and how do I apply what I learned from you in my life. And, and I'll, I guess what happens is it, it comes up during those moments. Yeah, but the thing, see, it comes up that those reactions stem from the idea of being a self, and yet you're not one. Yeah. So the point is, isn't attempting to control. Am I going to get resentful? It's just seeing that there isn't a you that gets resentful. Yeah. And then when you see it from that position, the resentment doesn't have the oomph it used to have because the oomph's coming from you, not the resentment. Yeah. It's the you combining with the resentment as the doer of it or the done to by it. That's where the juice happens. So if you, and you'll find that out. You know, it's this, you may think it's a theory, but if you apply it, you'll see that you and I give everything the meaning it has. And where, what would you call the, a broad name for that distribution of meaning would be selfing. And what's it based on being a long lasting independent separate entity? with certain structures of being the doer, having choice, all like that, yeah? When that's questioned, then it's, it's uh, what spins out of that loses velocity, so to speak, yeah? It can't orbit around the imaginary planet long. It fires off, yeah? Mm-hmm. It's, and then it just disperses from where it came into space a lot. So you have a lot more space in the car when it's not you in the resentment. But there's a, there's a seeing of the resentment. The resentment's arising, but you're not the one that's seeing it. The feeling of you seeing it is being the observer, and that's just part and parcel of the resentment. Yeah? A resentment can't, has no life without a one who has it. Yeah? So the life force or the attention or the energy is from the you, not the resentment. Yeah. And you can't deny the energy. I mean, the energy must come up for you, too. Like yeah. You want something there's no need different. to deny it. Yeah. There's just a... If you're in the denial, and I don't mean a mental denial, yeah, mm-hmm. or, a, or a conditional denial, you're not that. If that denial is activated, you'll travel later. It doesn't mean it's just going to be placid and serene all the time. All that stuff's going to arise, but it won't have the, have the life it had because we extend its life by the selfing, you know? It appears, and then it becomes a fact or a story, and it becomes the conditioning that we live from. It is used in so many ways when it's claimed by the selfing instead of just, see, just something that's arisen. It now becomes, you know, yes, I'm like that. I'm a resentful person. And it, it's, been, it's given life on a mental level by the, you know, by the condition. Yeah, I could say over eight years of listening to talks, I like to think some of it's seeped in to the point it where does. I don't have to over-identify all yeah. the time. And yeah, you travel lighter, yeah. right? That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. You travel lighter. But that energy still comes out. It's interesting. I mean, but it's not as much of an identification with the energy as a you, as a self. It's just, okay, I'm feeling this, maybe a bodily reaction, like some tightness in my chest. Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if it has life, let's say if it has shelf life, that's that's because it's coming from the product line of you. <laughs> You're what extends it, it's like extends its warranty to manufacture misery with. You know what I mean? It's the you. So, like, how could she have done that to me? We're that's questioning that. Comes, yeah. where, where's the source of the juice that that gives mental life to things, that gives meaning to things? If that basis isn't true. Then what's going to happen? This you'll find out. The system will shift. It has to morph because the parameters will be different. It won't be self-centered anymore. It will be centered, let's say. So you just travel lighter. It's a lot more spacious. Traveling lighter is just having space, in a sense, or being 
there's not that mental claustrophobicness, you know, there's just a space. So things are allowed to be because they are. They're arising, yeah? <laughs> but are they arising to you? See, the you piggybacks on this, the seeming reality of what's arising. You can't deny. If you spend your day denying you're fucked, you're really fucked, yeah? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work. So, but the you says, oh, so that, I'm really feeling that, and that sort of infers that there's the one that's really feel, feeling it is as real as that, which is being felt. That's a big leap, yeah? I would question that little, that weird mental reflection from, oh, this is really happening, and it must be, and therefore it's happening really to me. Yeah, sure. The me is as real as what's happening. It's like there was other things going on as well. There was a there was a fire on the side of the road, and, and so there was all these people looking the other way. And so as I was looking for reasons for why I felt the way I did, uh, I would, you know, I could see the whole picture that it wasn't just one thing, and that I was just happened to be in this place at this time. But I also was projecting outward, like, well, oh, these guys are waiting for me, and something's going to happen there. So yeah. you know, and again, but remember, it wasn't you. All of that stuff, that, yeah. you're just part, the sense of you is part and parcel of all that's arising. It's not something that's, that's sterile from the, from the manifestation. It's not observing it as a solid, un, uninterested uh, participant. It's not, a, it's not an exhibitionist. I mean, uh, it's not a voyeur. It's not watching everything. It's, it's arising. The feeling of you is arising with the resentment, with the... Uh, the, the, the thoughts about someone I'm disappointing someone all of that's they're all arising but when the you arises there's a feeling that it's historical yeah. and that it's it's the thing it's a thing that's before all that arises and will be there after all the, that arises departs that's a story man and, and so. that, that what arises I mean one thing that's come out through the years I think of listening and, and just being in, in uh, conversation with you and the talks is there's less of that identification. So those things do arise, but the story is less strong. It's not like I'm a bad person because now I'm late or they think I'm a screw up or, you know, that, that kind of talk or that chatter, that negative chatter is quieter. It's yeah. not even there. Well, that's the point. So you're traveling later. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point. You entertain some information. It gets into the system and it works, it works on the system. Yeah. And if, if it if it's repeated in a, in a in a in a certain way, it won't be more it won't be taken over by the system. It will infiltrate the system, but it will leave its effect on the system. Not the system won't leave its effect on that. Yeah, yeah. Sort of like there's even no doer thereof, like of the practices. I mean, that's what you're starting. To, it drives at like the the system or the person isn't doing the thing and getting and claiming. It's actually part of the larger whole. And the message is allowing more freedom in that way. Yeah, it works. That's the point. It's like it actualizes where the rubber meets the road, you know. That's the point. It's not like... I mean, if it's controlled environment, let's say if you're going to do a retreat, but you know it's only two days and one night, yeah? Mm-hmm. Most people can make it through that. And it's got, they got great food, and the bed you're sleeping in is better than the bed you have at your house. Like, I, one retreat I went to, I used to call it the upper middle way, because it was, it was better than my place where I lived. I didn't want to leave, you know what I mean? The room was nicer, they had eagle claw bathtubs, and it was great. And all I had to do was sit quietly for hours, I can pay that rent, that's easy. Yeah, so when something's conditional and contrived, yeah, something you can feel like free, yeah, but it's a conditional freedom. It doesn't hold water when you leave. It doesn't hold water usually. So what does the mind usually do? Well, therefore, it only happens there. I have to keep going back there. Mm -hmm. How valuable is that when that there isn't going to be here a lot? Yeah, it's a conditional thing. What happens if the next retreat's three months from now? Yeah? (laughs) I mean, it's something... It's got... (laughs) For it to be an active, quote-unquote, solution, it has to be right where you are at all times. Mm -hmm. 
with no requirements necessary. In other words, no conditions or circumstances are needed for it to have uh, an influence because it's always there at all times. Right, so no matter a traffic jam, no matter an eagle claw, a bathtub, no matter good yeah, surf, bad Yeah, exactly. Surf. You'll travel lighter. In other words, the terrain of one's life can be difficult. Yeah, I mean, People get ill here. And they get destitute, and they get screwed in a lot of levels, and they're and and the cases are airtight. They're not going to get out, you know. They got this and that, and that this, yeah. But this is there's no this isn't promising a paradise. It's just saying you'll travel lighter through the circumstances of one's life. Yeah. Is that like equanimity, like they talk about sometimes, or is it a little, just it's a little different? I would say it's even it's more it's different than that yeah. because equanimity may be a, a, an expression of yeah. that. But it's much, it can be joy and laughing okay. at sorrows and stuff like that, where basic, the basic premise of your life isn't taken so seriously, the idea of being a self. <laughs> you just, you can sort of travel later mm-hmm. through it. Yeah. And then when that occurs, then you see, hey, so if... Like, if you just look at what life told us when we were young, or told me anyway, they said, well, if you get the outside together, the outside will translate into a sense of satisfaction and value and everything good. And then your basic job is to maintain the circumstances and situations that afford you that sense. And they tell you how that's going to happen, money and this and that. Yeah. Yeah? And yet, let's say you get physically ill, that, that illness isn't being affected by the Jaguar you have in your garage. It doesn't. Like, if you have to go to the hospital, it doesn't matter if you're driven by a station wagon or a Jaguar. You just got to get to the hospital, yeah? Right. So the physical conditions going to override circumstantial conditions mm-hmm. at any given moment. Okay? So that's another card. So then some people work on their bodies and they really want to get healthy and this and that, which is pretty good. And then so if their life isn't that great, at least they're running all day and whatever, you know, they're healthy as hell. and They, they look good. And they look really good and they, whatever. Right. And yet, <laughs> if they have a thought or two and they, they're in a dynamic of believing that they're the thinker of that thought and therefore it has a lot of oomph on them, then a thought can screw a 12-hour workout. Yeah. You can come out of the greatest yoga class and your mind will just say, but what about, and then you're just, the effects aren't, a, aren't producing the effects anymore, yeah? Right. So the mind, the mental state overrides the physical state and overrides the circumstantial and the conditional state, yeah? What can override that mental state? Well, you may want to call it spirituality, or let's say just another state of mind that's not in self-centeredness, I would say that's the ace of the deck mm-hmm. because that will override circumstances or outshine them. Mm-hmm. It will outshine physical conditions and it will outshine mental states or mental conditions. I mean, yeah. Thoughts intervening, for instance, like you're talking about. Those are the mental states you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so you'll see. So so if this, if this has effect and influence on all of this mm-hmm. and these have no influence on that, I would say this is the big enchilada. You're yeah? like immune in some sense. In a way, I would put attention there right. because therefore I would, I would be, I would, uh, the effects the other states are having would be diminished by my entertaining this state. Yeah. yeah. So that's mm-hmm. why it allows traveling lighter to occur because it's do, it's the most it's got the most juice in a sense, yeah. It overrides everything else or outshines everything else. And yeah. if you think about how the, the variability in how humans react to situations, like someone could be put in the exact circumstances, like a rickshaw driver in India, you could take a CEO from New York and put him in that p- condition, and he might not, you know, be happy. But you could take another person, and they could be extraordinarily happy exactly. or happier because you and I give everything the meaning it has. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's an identification as self, then what's going to distribute and lend uh, its weight to all the meaning that can be expressed out here will be self-centeredness, which is a very small system. Mm-hmm. It's rooted in an archaic idea of the past. So basically, like in the course, it would say on in step uh, lesson seven. When it goes through all these first six lessons, it says, why are all these six lessons, and if you want to know what they are, just get the book, Miracles, Miracles, maybe. 
the first six lessons. Why are they the case? And it says because the seventh answers it, because you see only the past. In other words, we're looking out of a conceptual kaleidoscope. So it yeah. plays on itself. It says, why are the first six the way they are? Because you see you see them as the past. Yeah, you see yeah. from the past. From the past. And the fr- there is no thing, there is no place called the past. So you're actually seeing from nothing. From nothing. But not a nothing that's some- that's truly valuable, but a nothing for a lot of something. <laughs> a lot of concepts and ideas. So everything projection. that's noted now, after the conscious contact has been claimed by the mental process, as Paul being in contact... That immediately is the bridge. The claiming is the bridge for the mental state to give meaning to everything. And therefore, your relationship to that is the relationship from the past. Mm -hmm. So you're not living, in a sense. You're interpreting. You're like, you're a living interpretation, which is sort of a deadening of life. Yeah? Now, you can try to improve the self try to get it closer to the present right, like where does but the fact is, is it's not gonna, it doesn't work because it's a system that's rooted in seeing from the past and so every present that you introduce it to it will just refer to the past about this present yeah? so the system will dominate the invitation of the moment when you're in that identification as self it's not personal that's how it happens it will exude personalist but it's not personal it's just a system of thought and of uh, perception. So, if we look at that center and entertain, hey, it may not be that, what can happen? Find out. Mm-hmm. You know? Just entertain the possibility and then you'll find out. If it starts ringing true for you, entertain the possibility. You know, once, maybe you sincerely start entertaining it, like it says in recovery, and then you'll be established in it. They're different. When you get established in it, now you're traveling lighter on a like a consistent basis. Yes. So, so it's interesting. Sean and I were talking earlier, and he said uh, when, when he's asking about a question that might come up, he said, "What do you mean? Like, for instance, what does Paul mean by entertaining the possibility?" I, that's a good question, perhaps. You know, I don't know. Well, like when I'm looking at these trees, I'm entertaining that possibility of a tree. Really, it's just manifesting. I mean, well, it's more the entertaining, the aspect of entertaining is more on the mind side than what I'm entertaining. Okay. Yeah? The entertaining is a quality of mind. Like seeing in some sense? It's like, it's, uh, it's an aspect to me of seeing, yeah. but it's more of a, like, a, I don't it's like this. a movement around it. You're sort of like... Mm. The mind is like having something in its mouth and moving it around and tasting it in a lot of ways. In yeah? a non-conceptual way. Well, yeah, yeah. in a raw, sort raw. of like a raw mind yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Instead of process mind, which would be stuck on it's a tree. What kind of tree, right? How yeah. tall is it? Instead, right? <laughs> you just look at it and then it's sort of space, it just blows your mind in yeah. a way because... It's pure. If you look at it that way or see it, then it emphasizes the space around it. So you get a huge, a much larger, like, uh, vision. Yeah. Yeah? So that's what I'm saying about entertaining. Like, when I would read a book and I heard uh, a novel concept of, uh, you know, like, Huang Po, a great Zen master, said that you can't use Buddha to search for Buddha. Mm-hmm. Yeah? That would stop my mind, my conditional mind. And then another aspect of mind would start entertaining. While the other mind part was stopped, it would entertain what, what had mean? just been read. <laughs> right. So the conditional mind claimed to be the reader of it, but the, what it read stopped it for a while or paused it, and then the mind really got I digested what was read. That's yeah? what just happened to me when you said that. It kind of stopped me for a second, but then I started thinking of other Cohen's. You know, does the dog have the Buddha nature? It just started riffing on like yeah. similar, similar so qualities. If, 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 so let's say I hear a very a statement like that, or mind can't, you can't use mind to seek mind. You know, he says you'll go, you'll be doing it for eons and nothing will freaking happen. You know, so, so all right. In the basic state of conditional identification, that's already been claimed. You believe you're the one who heard that, yeah? But let's say what's been claimed just freezes the system. It's such a wild, novel idea, yeah? Mm-hmm. It sort of like freezes the system. It, it, it glues its little movement. And then mind entertains what was, had been claimed because like the, the claiming, like a fist or 
let's go for a second, and then it's there for mind to entertain. And then the mind entertains what was said, and it's, woo, that's it something else. That's yeah, finding out. Yeah. Then mind gets it. Mind can get things. Yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah, what is it about that, you know, that quality? I think I understand what you're saying. Like, there's a resonating quality to to mind, and, and, and it, it awakens. And I think I spend a lot of time, I mean, if I have to judge it, you know, it's like we get these hits. We get these free samples. And, you know, riff on that for a while. Maybe tell us a little bit about, like, mind gets it mind understands the message but it also drops out of the message you know what i mean because people i not without saying i want to seek it more i want to get it more but you know speak to that free sample thing because i think i think that's one of the issues too that comes up is how how do i stay in i mean after this conversation or after one of your talks i feel relaxed i feel more you know the resonation has happened and i'm more in tune yeah yeah like an instrument yeah that's good. <laughs> but so let's say you hear the message and then you understand it, yeah? Yeah. But on on another level it can be held that the message the message understands you. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And what it understands about the you is you're not that. <laughs> that's the what that's sort of hearing it in another way. Yeah? Right. So the message you get the message's understanding of you instead of you having the understanding of the message. Yeah? Yeah. So there is a difference. It's a different yeah. feeling to it, also. Once it's you having it's the bigger. message, it's, it's bigger. Yeah, exactly. It's left way it's, bigger. <laughs> it's exactly infinite. because if 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 it's you that heard the message, you've defined it by selfing already. You framed it, so it can't be as expansive as, as its nature, at least to you. Yeah. Yes. But if the message understands you, it, it's expansive. It distills into I'm not that, yeah. and therefore. The message has play, you know, woo, big play. Yeah, expansive. Yeah. And that little bit of sample, like that's what Ramesh Balsakar yeah. used to say in a free sample. That little sample or a little pause of mind where suddenly the balloon expands yeah. infinitely, that has a profound effect on the the traveling system. Yeah? Yeah, I think in, in Shambhala Buddhism, they used to call it the gap, you know, or another yeah. breathing technique. They'd say, oh, well, after you blow out, then there's this gap. And yeah. that's another form Yeah, maybe of you could try to uh, no windows. set it up through physical activity. Sure. But then again, the way, you know, a lot of times this happened to me was mind entertaining something. So again, mind thought, in, it was in the perceived uh, situation of, I'm the reader of this, I'm the, new, do, I'm the one who's going to understand this. And then the tables would be turned because the, what was said was so good in a way. It, it froze my system. The system froze. And then a lo- much larger system became apparent. And it downloaded what it thought was what was read. <laughs> and that has a lot more staying power than after it's been claimed and made into to fit your ideas of things. Yeah. In some ways, that's why yeah. hardship or unexpected things that might seem difficult can really open us up, right? Like, I mean, I'm exactly. looking at high, getting yeah. a job and I'm over-identified with me and my career and my job. And I have a lot of fear about that. But at the same time, I have a little bit, I try to entertain the possibility of, hey, what could happen? If I don't get the job I think I could have, what could happen? And couldn't that be as exciting or interesting or more so than in terms of my life experience? Yeah, yeah. You can, your mind can run around with different ideas Scenarios. once it's a little bit off, let off the leash, you know? But, but that's the point I'm trying to, I mean, I guess I'm asking a question of like, then, and maybe not just a Zen bitch slap to wake you up, but... Um, you know, in in, in 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 big events, you can also have these moments of awakening and free sampling as well, right? Even in pleasure and pain. In little and, events too. In little events too. For yeah. sure, you can walk down the street and look at the cracks on the win- on the sidewalk, and that could send you off. Yeah. Yeah, the mind isn't <laughs> defined by beauty and ugliness conceptually. It finds its own interest wherever it is, you know. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised. Mm-hmm. When it's unfettered by the the leash of selfing, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. It can blow your mind. Many, many times during the day. Mm-hmm. So then after a while you realize the blown mind is actually more one. of the mind than the uh, controlled conditional mind, yeah. The blown mind is really much more uh, suited to be relied on than the other one. Which now, I'm not the, saying yeah. who's relying on it, because there's no one that relies on mind. But there are, let's say, there are dominant systems that take over. 
So, so it sounds like entertaining without conceptualization. It sounds like entertaining as experience, as a blown mind, as these as these wows or ahas kind of happen to let them settle in. Well, like, um, it it it's, uh, I, I guess I guess what I'm wondering about is <clears throat> how does um. It just happens, right? I mean, there's no way to manufacture it. There's no way to seek it. There's no way to... Well, people are trying to, yeah. you know. But uh, I don't know if their success rate is good, yeah. you know. I mean, if you keep throwing something towards something, you'll, one of them will fall into the slot maybe. But I don't know if that's what's producing what comes out of the slot. Yeah. yeah. I feel finally it's got to... It's, It's a tricky thing because there are certain, let's say, like alcoholism. Alcoholism, we were going over it last night in a way. There's a statement, I think, in the Bible, the New Testament. I'm not familiar with it that much, but I think he talks about the kingdom of heaven or God's house is a mansion or something full of rooms, yeah? Let's say. So let's say we're in, we're, that's a possibility. We could be living in a very large space, not meaning the physical space would be large, but, you know, mind space yeah and let's say you have alcoholism now that possibility is not a probability because let's say alcoholism is like a dog so in that house this mansion full of rooms you've got a big dog living with you yeah actually living as you and that dog is sort of ruining the fucking place shitting everywhere you got to clean up after it biting people you got to make excuses for it you know humping people's legs <laughs> you know eating all your shoes and like that so there the probable possibility is you got this big house but you can't entertain it because there's a dog that's running the show so that's sort of like alcoholism now you can keep saying you ha you have this mansion you have all these rooms mm -hmm. but in actualization or in manifestation uh that's not so because the dog basically has the house and the rooms yeah yeah and no matter how many philosophical or spiritual ideas, the dog's still t ripping up all those self-help books and everything like that. So, in a way, there's something that's needed to be done. Right. That alcoholism, that dog needs to be taken care of so that what? So that it goes to sleep. Right. So now it's a possibility now, but it's not the probability. It's there, but it's not active. And you have the run of the house. So you have a lot, a lot of space. That's what happens with people in recovery. Before recovery is treated by a step, step program or whatever, they are in a very claustrophobic state. I mean, they have tried to fit life around them and it's become a straitjacket. Mm -hmm. They're in a very, and they usually have lots of consequences in the outside realm, getting divorced, people hating them, owing money, this and that. Yeah? And so, we do certain things and that alleviates that, mm -hmm. that dilemma so that what? That mind can become free range. The mind isn't probably going to entertain being free range when the alcoholism is active. I haven't seen many enlightened alcoholics. Right, mind can't get out of mind. Back to what you said earlier. You, know? like you can't think your way out of that problem. You have to sort of act your way out of it. Well, the, yeah, the thing is, there's, there's like, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, or like, render unto Caesar's what Caesar's, your physical and mental state have demands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have a disease of perception and mind, it's probably going to be something that will be needed to be done here. Hopefully, the apparatus has that predilection, mm -hmm. because it will look like it's a requirement for the other thing to happen, mm -hmm. but the other thing doesn't happen, it's always there. <laughs> but it, this still looks like a requirement mm -hmm. because you won't recognize its quality of always being there because the dog, the dog always seems everything. to be there. The dog is predominant, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So when I was out there using drugs, I had been introduced to spirituality, but basically it had absolutely no... Uh, it wasn't actualizing any beneficial effects in my traveling whatsoever because there was a big freaking dog running which the is, show. Which is yeah. sometimes in Buddhism they talk about purification, right? And I mean, sometimes Yeah, there are just all these different the things. So <laughs> Get the dog out. A lot of people want to jump from, like, uh, oh, if I'm not that, they try to frame what it would mean to them as a that if they weren't that, yeah? Mm -hmm. So they try to frame it from a self 
what it would be like to be a no. self that's not a self. Right. Yeah? I wouldn't have to do any of this stuff to make myself better. Yeah? Right, right, and right. I haven't seen anyone succeed. It's like it's like a layer of an onion. There's always another there's another thing. I always get self. emails from people who yeah. have fallen into okay, that and that, they've yeah. tried to use, let's say, Advaita to sort of get over alcoholism and they're calling me from their mother's cellar or they're in a freaking rehab or a detox. And they, I know, I know, I know, but there's no actualization. Well, it happened to me too when I was. I know, (laughs) many times. So, knowledge avails you nothing if it's self knowledge. If it's self knowledge, avails you nothing. What is that? Well, if the selfing or the identification of self is where the the acquiring of knowledge is is based on, that's not going to do you any good concerning the identification of self. Self can't get out of self. No matter how much self knows about self, it's like the the professor of holes still finds himself in holes. He knows everything about holes, but it's not allowing him to stay out of them. What's the point of that information? Yeah? So this is about... Just f- it's maybe practical. F- it seems like, at first blush, someone, someone would say it's not very pragmatic, but then when you actually consider it, it it's very pragmatic. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I, I mean, the truth doesn't need any any more. <laughs> you know, in the unmanifest state, it's fine. I'm sure. <laughs> it's in manifestation. There's need to know the truth because it has value here. Because what's going on here isn't supporting the idea of the truth. Yeah? We're taking ourselves to be separate, long lasting, independent, separate entities, and we've claimed the movement of, let's say, awareness as our own, as if we're doing it. Yeah? So now, raw awareness has a value here because how it's been interpreted in this place. Yeah? The lack of humility, really, too, isn't it? A t- well, of course, if you claim it, if you claim to be the one who's aware, I would say that's a very arrogant point of view. Yeah? yeah. So. And a relief at the same time, because now you're not responsible for a lot of things you might have thought you were, right? <laughs> exactly, but then it, it actually allows you to be more accountable for it. <laughs> See, like, it more was a weird paradox yeah. in AA, because when I was, I was super responsible out there. That's why I didn't want to deal with anything. I thought I was the runner and doer of everything. I was affecting everybody. So I, fuck it, I, you know? So, but when I, be, when I realize I'm not the doer, and, you know, there is, no, there is no one who has choice, there's just mental options that are being displayed here, yeah? There's not, no one who has a choice, then I was relieved, relieved. of that, uh, that inappropriate responsibility, but I became much more accountable. I could go back to people and say, hey, you know, I really fucked up. So, and you see a lot of because people. I didn't fuck up. You see, that's the whole point why I could finally do it. Forgiveness. Where, if I believed I I fucked up, my strategy was never admit it. <laughs> I'm gonna run. I'll just move out of the country. Blow it up, right? Just yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. Take off. I mean, yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who get overwhelmed. I mean, you know, I mean, you can talk about addiction, alcoholism, but like overwhelm happens and is this is this pragmatic for that i mean is it really i mean or or was that just going to happen too in this in this plane you know that occasionally we'll just be overwhelmed by things well how about being overwhelmed by this you see (laughs) really yeah yeah. it'll overwhelm you too (laughs) (laughs) totally overwhelm you it's a beautiful thing. Right? <laughs> it will. It's good. You'll be so overwhelmed, you, the pieces won't be able to get back together again. Yeah? Which is kind of what happened when someone said, you know, who's seeking to you, right? Yeah, the so. jigsaw puzzle gets blown out, and they can't find their way back mm-hmm. to make sense. Yeah? And then all the attention goes to where the, those, that space that was covered by all the jigsaw pieces. That yeah? you thought you had to put together, right? <laughs> No, be overwhelmed is a beautiful way to travel every day. Yeah. If you omit your overwhelmedness, <laughs> then the, that huge desire to manage and control will seem pointless. Yeah? Surrender. Fuck it, yeah. You could, you know, if someone went over, <laughs> uh, went over, looked over, over my day with a fine tooth comb, I should be, like, uh, institutionalized, really. <laughs> they say, how does this guy, <laughs> how does he make it through a week? Really, if they actually looked at how I do... What happens, there'll be no one in this world that would take that as a path to going anywhere except to chaos and confusion. 
in a way. Yeah? Yet somehow it seems to work right. out. As long as federal agents don't see this, I should be all right. <laughs> I should be able to keep living underneath the radar. <laughs> but seriously, I've just been stumbling and bumbling. And my solution was no, not about getting to become a better manager, but admit that I'm not managerial quality, that I'm overwhelmed by this place. Mm-hmm. There's so much information and stimuli occurring, and there's so much stimuli being reacted on it and kicking something else up. It's totally overwhelming. Yeah. Yet... The spaciousness of silence is really overwhelming. It's, a, it's an incredibly... Because instead of exciting and agitating, it disarms, yeah? You just really give up. And see, people talk about surrender, but unless you've had the grace of, it, of an experience of it, I don't think you can do it justice. So those are two things... I had thought. no... Well, I just yeah. want to go. I had no idea what surrender... I had, I had all these ideas about it. Yeah. But when it actually happened, or what I call surrender yeah. now happened, then I had I knew it, and then when I finally knew it, I could entertain it. Yeah. So in other words, instead of just having it a uh, an event that was probably going to be really infrequent and never occur again, mm-hmm. my mind, my raw mind, got it, and then entertained it, and then it entered a state of surrendered. Yes. It mimicked what surrender was in an experience and made it a state. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of people might go back and forth, right? Into, yes. into it, out of it, into it, out of it. And they don't have a big event necessarily, but it's beyond free samples, I think, to, to exercise that state, right? I mean, it, it, you're talking about something that... Well, you don't exercise the state. It exercises you? Yeah, yeah. It's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah? See, for us to be constant, everything else has to be an experience. Yeah, that would come and go or be minor compared to our major because the whole idea of being a continuum being a someone a constant someone for a period of time is the basis of selfing yeah so it doesn't it doesn't want to enter states because the state would realize that the state would reveal that you're a state that of the mind. continuum doesn't exist well you're a state yeah. of mind that it called is selfing it's not a condi- it's not a reality it's, it's a, a state it's of a, mind that constantly needs to be reinforced and and uh it's like a queen that's constantly pampered all day, thoughts surrounding it, da, 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 yeah? But the idea that you're not that, mm-hmm. yeah? see it. Yeah. yeah. And see it doesn't mean, see it is like, Seeing isn't just because the, going through the visual, the apparatus that, that allows vision. Seeing is mind. Seeing is like awareness, yeah? It may experience, it, awareness may uh, translate as a hearing, a feeling. But let's say we had 20 gates of senses. Mm-hmm. We'd, uh, there'd still be enough awareness to go through 20 gates. If there was 800 gates that were available, 800 gates. The awareness is like an infinite resource, yeah? It's not, it's not defined by the gates it's moving through. It's not vision, it's not hearing, it's seeing. Seeing or awareness, yeah? It, these are just ways it manifests here. But it doesn't mean the ways it manifests aren't the sum of what's manifesting. Right, conscious of versus just conscious. Conscious as. As, yeah. 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 I have a bunch of other questions, but um, I could just run through them and you can laugh because I think some of them you might find humorous. Well, whatever. Yeah, let's see what happens. All right. Uh, can you comment? You just mentioned a teacher even in this in this conversation, but can you comment on the influence of teachers and important ones to you? Yeah. Well, I don't. They uh, they introduced me to the idea. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't. I wasn't coming it. I, I wasn't coming to it by. The practices I was participating in, yeah, I wasn't getting to it at all. And you know, and the amount of time wasn't bringing the, the this invitation closer to me or anything. It was just somehow life brought me to a meeting out of the blue. I went with my I don't know if it was the first one. I went with my girlfriend. This lady was speaking uh, from uh, Belgium. She actually was married with Tapapaji once. Her old name was Mira. I think she changed it to Ganga or something. 
But uh, I went to Berkeley to hear her, and my girlfriend came with me. And uh, my girlfriend didn't come back, but I came back a couple times that week. And uh, that's what happened was what I was describing before. There was, by hearing what she said, there was a freezing of the system. And I was under this idea that I was observing states of mind, but when I heard her, my mind downloaded something else. Well, that being that observing is a state of mind. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was assuming that was me, right. and it was shown to me very brilliantly yeah. and very like electrically that I'm not that. Yeah. So that was pretty damn cool. It was sort of like my lens had been fixed like this for a while, and suddenly it opened up. The aperture got expanded. So I was like. I left there, and I was entertaining that expansion. And so I came back the next day or something, and I listened more. Yeah, and I listened more, and then I went around and heard other people. And uh, I was reading some books, and, I'd, uh, and then I ran into the Course in Miracles and yeah. a group of people that were involved in that, and I was in recovery, and all this stuff was going on. It was fermenting like a soup, huh? Yeah, and, and then one... Stew. But the one the one uh the one like idea that rose to the top was that idea of not that you know yeah. i'm not a long lasting independent separate entity that one rose to the top and basically everything else sort of uh, crystal crystallized around that idea so there was expressions of that one idea in a lot of different ways which was sort of like reflecting the, the light of that idea wow you know yeah, it was so i was entertaining too, right it was getting, very disturbing yeah, yeah. Yeah, my system broke down. Was breaking down. Yeah, which was the ego structure, the self. I don't know what the hell it was, but it was uncomfortable, physically and emotionally and nervously, you know, energetically. Yeah. So, which is not what a lot of people expect to get, you know, when they go to teach it, right? To get up, but I mean, sometimes it happens, right? Yeah. But what I find is, uh, see, it's sort of like if I. If there's something that's needed and I go like that, like a teacher was an inviter to me. Once the invitation was dropped in and entertained, I didn't need to go back to get the invitation again. Yeah. Yeah? So maybe I like to do that. I like to sit in that in satsang. But the the pressing need was removed. And that's really a joy. Yeah? And uh, so... Like I don't call, I don't believe I'm a teacher. If I'm teaching anything, it's about duality. It's not non-duality. How could you teach non-duality? It's impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can invite, right? And the way I invite is to sort of share uh, about the dualistic construct of mind, yeah. the subject-object of, of this conditional mind, and by doing that, the it, unconditional. Yes, yes. And a presence gets sensed of what's always so. When you start questioning the so-ness of what isn't so. (laughs) Yeah. You describe what it's not. I remember we had a really good conversation and when we started writing the book chapters, it was, uh, it was, okay, how can we tell, what are the stories that describe what it's not? Yeah. And and tell those stories. That's all you can do. How can you describe what it is? They've said it all in the history of scriptures. It's indescribable. Yes. It's, you know, some of them gave them their best shots. Shots. Hoang Po is really beautiful in some statements about mine. But it's for me, what I used to run into was when someone described the beauty of what I am, what was hearing it was what I wasn't. And it wasn't really doing me much good. It was actually used by what I wasn't to beat the shit out of what I'm, what I wasn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I. It, it yeah. landed on me in a different way where when it started to download, I realized, shit, you know, I'm just going to see what I'm not, yeah? Mm-hmm. And it, after a while, it dawned on me, I'm the seeing of what I'm not, you know? So mm-hmm. whatever is arising, I'm not that. So therefore, whatever is occurring, by letting it be what it is, it, re- it shows that I'm not that, yeah? Right. Yeah. Well, you answered a bunch of these questions, yeah. So uh, that's kind of a healing process, I mean, in some ways. Well, if you want to download it to the body, and the, and yeah. let's say the mental, I was wondering about the, that energy, the conditional yeah, mind for yeah. sure. It could be a healing, th- or it could be a very disruptive thing. Who knows what yeah. will happen? Yeah, it can work either way, I suppose. Yeah, or it can work. It just works the way it works. But I wondered about that. Yeah, how that energy works if it is healing. Could you said? But remember, that energy isn't that. 
it's a manifestation here. Like there's uh, one there's a one statement in certain Buddhist circles where they describe like whatever mind, and it's like the uh, the essence of mind is emptiness. Uh-huh. Yeah, the nature of mind is to reflect, and the manifestation of mind is uh, energy. Yeah. This is what's happening here is energy, yeah. and then it, and then it's configured into appearances. Yeah, but it's energy, right? Mm-hmm. So the the manifestation of mind is energy. So a lot of times you'll feel mind as energy here, energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so because that's mind manifested. Yeah. Yeah. So you you feel it as things, which is also energy. But then sometimes you'll feel it as energy itself, it's energy yeah. running, and uh, so yeah. And then, if you look at if it the, if the nature of mind is to reflect, yes. Mm-hmm. So, what's what's happening in a way? It's reflecting a system of thought called self-centeredness. So, therefore, almost by reflecting that system, there's a sense of being an image in the reflection, a Paul, a someone. Yeah. So the mind takes itself to be what's construed by seeing or reflecting self-centeredness or selfing. It construes uh, an image of being the one, the phantom, but you never see that, yeah? Because right. it's it's not something that's being reflected, it's the the reflectiveness is taking itself to be that. It takes so a it's, form. It's identified. It identifies as yeah? a form. So let's say if you entertain the center of that system, which is you're not a self, then that same mind that can reflect can reflect the absence of that. And so that's Span. the peace. That's the sense of presence, which is healing. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> yeah. Is that related to happiness too? You think? Well, I would say so. Yeah. Can translate to that, but happiness is a vague term, you know. Yeah. I just rather call it traveling lighter. Yeah. Happiness is something that usually. Either its opposite precedes it or comes after it. Yeah. So happiness, I don't know. You know. You know what I mean when you get happy. Like I got some good news. You call it good news today. Now you're gonna be sad tomorrow. The happiness. See, my happiness never really arises and gets blown up too big. Because it'll always be popped in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, I don't feel like it's happiness. Mm-hmm. I think it's you might call it equanimity or whatever, or equilibrium, or just for me a traveling lighter. Yeah. I'm open to happiness, but more like bursts of joy or just, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So what about, uh, what about people who say you're a guru or you're enlightened? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, well, I'm not, and I'm not. But I don't, you know, that's not up to me. Yeah. Do I, I don't. I don't say. I say hello to them, right. <laughs> and hopefully goodbye quickly. I had to throw I that put up. the emphasis on the goodbye. But uh, yeah, yeah. Without see, later. that's the point. You know, you get stuck in terminology. It's just another People way do. of deflecting the the availability of the message. Yeah, my view. But it's important to be with people. Like, I mean, I'm saying there's all kinds of people and people who approach with preconceived notions or they'll they'll launch, you know, questions that are based on their life experience. But, like, there's really an importance. I was reading some Deschardins, this Jesuit, and he yeah, said something about how people being – there's a quality, he said, to being with people who are exploring awareness and, and consciousness. And, 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 I mean, I think that's what happens in the groups. And it's important, it seems, to yeah. have that uh, togetherness. In that's that. been known for a long time. Yeah. That's what satsang is, association with the truth. Yeah. In, the old, in the old Indian Hindu stuff, they'd always say, if you want to be a, a robber, hang out with robbers. If you want to be like a saint, hang out with saints, you know. So – you're, you're going to be influenced by the company you keep, obviously. The mind will be. So finding a, um, people who are entertaining the invitation, as it were, can help you I resonate can, I tune can, your instruments. Yeah, I can feel it feels... Uh, without, well, yeah, without seeking. It's like a soothing balm here. Yeah. You know, a lot of times the ups and downs of a day, you're, you're shook up, you know. Yeah. The mind's agitated. And if there's a satsang, you can go there and chill out. 
which which is what happens in some temples. Like I'm going to go do Waitara, Waitara empowerment. I haven't done any of those kinds of things in in probably over two years. But it's like it just came up. It's the right time. It seems like the time to go to a temple and do this thing. Yeah. And without any big trips, you know, it'll be an interesting experience this weekend. So. Yeah, yeah. Don't make if you don't make much out of it, it may make you much. You know, <laughs> really. You know what I mean? It's just like if you put it. If you define it, def- <laughs> let it define you. Yeah. you know? That's I think to me. I mean, that to me is faith in a sense. Letting life define you instead of rushing to have a definition about mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. You know. Certainly. To me, that's what finding out is about. In my in my view, see, I know I've worked with a lot of people in recovery, and one of the biggest deterrents of listening to any suggestions is I know, mm-hmm. I know I'm not doing well. No, you don't. You know. It just goes on and on and on. So I know is a is a is an aspect of a, a, a form of knowledge in self centeredness. Then there's other opportunities, other ways, which is I don't know, which I can Zen they'd say is one of the highest forms of mind, traveling mind, is I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah? In that I don't know, you're put in a position to find out. And find out is a much uh, for me, much more convincing form of knowledge than I know it. Yeah, when you find out something, it can become like an unspoken yes. You got, you're established now. The mind is established. Yeah, it's like it's rock solid in a way. The comings and goings don't interest it as much. It doesn't follow the the fumes of the mental comets. You know, it's just sort of resting. Like what is that? What Jesus said, "I'm of this world, not in it." Or how did he say it? I'm yeah, in it. I'm in. I'm in this I'm world, in this but world, not, of, not it. of it. Yeah. <laughs> if you're of this world, you're yeah. interacting. <laughs> well, really, if you're of this world, a lot of your activity will not to be in it. Right. Will it? Right. You'll be trying to get out of it. Right. <laughs> if you're of this world, you want to get out of, of it. Of the worldly things. I know. What he was speaking. Of. I okay, know. Yeah. But if you're if you're in this, world, in this but world, but not of it, then of it. far out. Yeah. yeah. Then you're in in it. a way. Yeah. yeah. But when if you're really of this place, you want to get yeah. out of this place, don't you? Yeah. Because it's all conditional. It's, I mean, look at all the external. look at all the seeking. Yeah. Uh, established like commerce, you know, like. Selling goods, fashion, tons of seeking constantly. Kidding. That's coming from believing you're in this place. Yeah. You want to get out of it somehow. You want to look better. You want to, you know? Yeah. All addiction is trying to get out of something in a way, isn't it? You're trying the to get out state. of something. Yeah. yeah. But what's that current state you're trying to get out of? You must believe you're in it to want to get out of it. So it's truly, if you're in this world, you're going to be trying to get out of it all day. <laughs> But if you're if you're in the world, I mean, if you're of this you're world, of this world yeah. but if you're in it, yeah, but you have a sense of you're not of it, then you can travel later while you're in it. Yeah, it's a good strategy. <laughs> you carry a picture of is it Ramana Marashi in your wallet? I do. Yeah. Why? Because I don't have any presidential pictures in my wallet, so I might as well have a saint. <laughs> I don't have any Benjamin Franklins or Jeffersons. Or he said there are no Ramana. others. I think he said there. <laughs> one thing he said was that I saw recently was there are no others. <clears throat> yeah, I liked him. I went to. I I like you know. I got a lot of out of his. Uh, oh, you seen him? Yeah. No, he was dead. He's dead. He yeah. died, I think, at fifty or fifty-two. But I went to where he lived in India and stuff, and uh, I just had a fondness for the guy after reading some of his stuff. Well, I read the whole book of his like a uh, talks with Ra- uh, Ramana Maharshi. I got it in I got it in India the first time I was in India, which is three years of his talks. Mm-hmm. So I read it, that whole thing many times, and I just. I have a great fondness for him so mm-hmm. I, I really like I would aspire to someone who could live his whole life wearing diapers I think that's incredible to me or, or I swear to God are there other people you've turned me on I went to Nizagata's place, place, place too yeah. I went he's there he's a cigarette also. salesman right people that had an impression yeah. on me I tried to go see yeah. even though they were dead I went to it's where they place. were yeah it's just sort of like I never thought much about it I just got a bug up my butt and I wanted Check to do it, it so I went to India yeah. and you've been I, to Thailand too a lot right yeah yeah in Bali. But I Nizagadada, yeah, Nizagadada, I went to where he worked. It was like this little hole in a wall with a little aluminum fence thing, you know, little thing you pull down. Yeah. He used to must sit in this thing and sell cigarettes. And but then they, and his house, his right? family let us go to his house. No, that's where they'd have the meetings. Oh, they'd meet and us. they wow. were eating and they let us go in and, yeah, so. 
yeah, I think uh, all those that stuff, you know, I'm just a small dude, you know. <laughs> But they had big influences on me. Sure. I like I like my mind stopped many times reading them. Yeah. And that's what I said. The conditional mind got frozen and then raw mind sort of got what was being said and really made something out of it, you know? Actually left it to be nothing really. It you know, extracted all the something out of it and just let it be raw nothing. Oh, yeah. To me that's the real value. So and I can't explain why that quality is there in my mind, yeah. But that's what's that's what I've that's what's happened to you. Does yeah. like a natural compassion arise when that quality manifests more? Do you think? I oh mean, yeah, I thought it can be. Yeah, I don't know how it is always. for other people, but I have a. You know, I don't know, want to get personally engaged with a lot of people. But yeah, so I you like, wouldn't like. Judge. I like to see everyone travel lighter, definitely. Yeah. You know, and when they start to, do you see sometimes that that's a natural like thing to happen just to care for care more for like other people or other beings or yeah i guess so i don't know i think i have the that proclivity to do that because of in aa service is a major thing you know service is part of the triangle of recovery unity and service so service uh i already i got what that meant when young when i was with the spiritual teacher when i was young a guru i got the idea of service somewhat and it makes sense, you know, because if the dilemma you're is you're obsessed with self, yeah. if that's the activity, then to get out of self is a damn good move, yeah? So I try to get out of self many ways, drugs and everything like that. I would say doing service was uh, had the most beneficial consequences. Unless, and it's pretty easy to unless apply. Unless jail time. It's pretty, pretty easy <laughs> to apply, right? I mean... Well, yeah. It's, what happens is, if if your mind gets what service is, maybe then you'll you may enter into a of a phase of being of service where it's sort of like um, just like if you if you grok what gratitude is for you, then then after a while your attitude is infused with it. Yeah, that's how you travel. So you may not have the joy of feeling grateful like you used to. You know, as like a a, a rare occurrence. Yeah. Wow, I'm grateful. You know, something happened, and I'm really grateful for it. Yeah. But your your living your 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 attitude and outlook is is grateful. So I like that kind of state a lot more than an experience. It's once uh, one of our mutual friends, Chris. He said to me, "I said, how do you pray?" And he said, "I say thank you all the time." And it really stuck with me because at the time I was struggling. I was struggling. I was trying to figure out how to pray. How do I pray? And and I think. It, he, he taught me in that one simple statement that it just comes from from an appreciation for everything that's happening. Yeah, yeah. There's like you know. Do you pray? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. But uh, but even if I did, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the that's the little trick. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so, I mean seriously. Yeah. But uh, I feel like I'm in the mode of prayer though a lot. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of a, a, a state. I have a lot of appreciation. Yeah, which is maybe what that what that's about when I ask that question. Yeah, yeah. I find there's a lot of you know things tend to want to express here. So you know when you were when you were in the throes of an addiction, a certain aspect of mind used that uh, opportunity to express through. Yeah? yeah, so you exhibited. Like say the finer qualities of a drug addict and, a, and an asshole, you well, know, really, you. <laughs> pretty much every day. And some of us refined it to an art, yeah. you know. Yet the same quote unquote person, because there ain't no person. Yeah. Once the mind gets taken out of that vat, let's say, and is put into the vat of recovery, it also expresses. But now what it's expressing is totally different than what it was expressing before. Yeah. The parasite now was on it, sure. with all these different expressions, it's very difficult to say. There was a solid someone that was doing all of that, and now that solid someone was doing is doing all of this. This could be frightening for people in relationships, though, right? Like, I mean, if you think about it in the sense, hey, of like, people who, in relationships to... should be frightened. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about they may frighten. They're already frightened enough. <laughs> in a sense of like, you know, who do you love if you love someone? You know, it starts to get really heavy, doesn't it? The relativity of like, you know, you're saying, well. Yeah. I don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a lovely girlfriend and uh yeah. and I leave it at that. 
they uh, yeah yeah if I think about it I'll probably come up with a reason why I should be out of here yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I can relate I mean there's a certain amount of of, of um, allowing the life to manifest and to appreciate what's what's present and uh, you know there's there's wisdom too that comes to into play too as well right I see mean, isn't it? Some of the what some of the states that come up, there's no way you could have ever tried to get there because you have no idea what it's like. None. Mm. The conditional mind has lots of ideas, but they're not even they're close. Constrained. Yeah. yeah. Sure. They're not even close. It's sort of like a bad plastic flower compared to the real flower. I mean, a bad one. Yeah. It's just not even close. You may think they're both flowers, but they're in a totally <laughs> different realm. Yeah. So. In the I don't know, that's almost like a, a freeze. You're frozen. It's like in recovery, it says, you know, we're going to turn our will and lives over to the care of a higher power of our own understanding. Well, hopefully in time, that you, you, will, you will actually let that higher power reveal itself, reveal its own understanding to what you call you. Instead of having your own understanding of it, mm-hmm. that's going to severely... Limit yeah. it, yeah, yeah. So that's sort of like a, a flavor or a statement yeah. that, like, intimates a flavor of mind change, yeah, and of relationship. Yeah, relationships are I cool. Mean, a relationship man. to your yeah. higher power, relationship to a person, relationship to the tree, relationship like to be open in some sense to it revealing itself through its. Well, let's just say, in that little realm. A relationship to a higher power of your understanding is going to be a lot easier than a relationship with a person He's of their own this. understanding. Because <laughs> they're going to have an understanding of you that probably doesn't match your little story about you. It's very easy to have a higher power when it's of your understanding. Nothing's going to be ruffled. You know what I mean? It's not very Nothing, there's not yeah, going to be any big surprise. Yeah. yeah, because it's of your understanding. It's already nuded. But another person, they, they have their own little... <laughs> No matter how much you want to pigeonhole them, they're going to leak out. Yeah. I think I once, I once was talking to you about some goals I had or something I wanted to do. We're not in, in a, a virtual reality relationship. Yet. Exactly. I was in a relationship and I was talking about these ideals or these goals and what I wanted. And you said, well, that's all fine and good, but that not, might not be her agenda. <laughs> that's right. And, and it stuck with me because we all have agenda, agendas. <laughs> yes. And when you put two agendas together, you're, that's right. you're, you're exactly. in for some ruffling. That's right. So Regardless. It's, that's why it's always easy to have dead masters, you know. <laughs> They're not going to come over here and Zen bitch slap you. They aren't. They're well, dead. It, They're not here. Right? Yeah. Something they say, but you've always usually construed that into your understanding. Yeah. But alive, something alive is a lot different, you know. Yeah. That's why it's so much easier to have the one as a past relationship. Mm. Because you're not, there's nothing, you know, it's euphoric recall you might say as well right i mean it's all laid up yeah so but a living situation that's like for me that's juicy the message is so living it's like a 24 7 uh oven that's on always so it's baking all the time and so a, a biscuit one day will look totally different the next day so you can't say oh this is the biscuit you know it's all just it's like it's uh, a dynamic thing it's like here, in a way, like when you do a talk or a talk happens, it's sort of like uh, some notes download from, let's say, another place. And then the mind uh, accepts that challenge and riffs on it, mm-hmm. but with the musical instruments it has. Like, mm-hmm. let's say it's defined by a saxophone. So it tries to do its best with those alien notes and try to play it into what can be understood to be music here. Mm-hmm. That's sort of what it's like. Yeah? Yeah. But the flavor of that, of note, doesn't, to, to sense it doesn't, it doesn't need to be played. It's there. Yeah. It's resonating or reverberating all the time. Yeah. Now, some people have a seat assignment to try to express it in some form or another. Yeah. So therefore then they've got an instrument and they're going to try, attempt to articulate what can't be articulated. Yeah. Well, and I can, I can relate play. to that as yeah. a scientist. You yeah, know? it's like so, there's the celestial. There's something happening, and then you get you get to, or your seat assignment is to describe it and formulate it and organize it so that other people can see these relationships. You know, exactly and, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
but do it loosely in a sense, yeah. yeah? Because there isn't the way. The truth, exactly. There isn't the to way. Get into. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's ways. See, that sometimes happens. I don't know if it's well, like that now, knowing, but in right? like yeah. the non-duality yeah. thing, there would be like non-duality dueling. You know yeah. what I mean? I look at these websites, and they're like that. You know, they're saying it at the most perfect way with a imperfect language. But what's the point? You lose the spirit of it, maybe. Yeah. The Which spirit of it, it, it's sloppy here. This is manifestation, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even in science, I mean, it happens. Yeah, like a lot of scientists, they always said that their the biggest revelations they ever had were when they weren't thinking Unexpected. about it. Unexpected, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a scientist now at Columbia who's teaching classes on what we don't know. He realized that the most important thing he could teach to his students, and he's an award-winning, very famous scientist, was that he realized that students thought when they were learning about science, that they were learning about all what's known. And he said, but scientists work with what they don't know. He said their, their biggest discoveries come by accident mostly, you know, and, or you don't know when to expect the result you're going to get. But he, but so he started to have a class, which is just describing, so you study biology, but you study what they don't know in biology. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I <laughs> it's like become that. wildly popular. Yeah, I like that approach. Yeah, yeah, they do. It recognizes the messiness. See, I find if you study what you know or can know, then you live what you don't know. That's different to me. I much I don't. What do you mean, living well, what you don't know? You live in you don't live what can't be known mm. in a way. It intimates itself. Yeah, it intimates through you, and you get intimation of it or a sense of it. Yeah. So you're walking around. Well, if you know, you live what you know, and that's it. And if you live what you don't know, then you live the possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the highest form of knowledge. Is I don't know, because mm-hmm. uh, that's open. And it's the it's truth, open isn't to it? receive. I know is like all right. I already got it. Yeah. I don't know. There's an opening. Yeah. And your cup with will flow whatever they say. And that I know happens every day. I can think of so many little examples like, you know, I know that I should have been on time. You know, I it come up with the I knows presents itself to me every, yeah, yeah, can yeah, every day yeah, and all sorts sure, of little things sure. that, that pop up. Right? Sure. Yeah. It's like a failed system gone wild, self centeredness Really, it is. <laughs> it's, just, it's unrestrained now. Yeah. You talk yeah. about, I like how you talk about cutting it at the root, right, rather than the branch. Well, remember though, it's all imaginary, but you can use these terms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you if you're pruning the branches, they just you know just look at roses. When you cut the thing, that they bloom more the next year. You'll be busy cutting your whole life. Yeah. There's a solution, you know. From the solution's point of view, there's no problem, really. And the only reason why we call it a solution because we think there's a problem. Yeah, so, so therefore, there's a need of a solution. But when you get the solution, you realize there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the problem you had yesterday? Where is it really? Is it hovering over you right now? No. It even has to be. Problem, how would? How could you even you, visit that problem? Even through the problem thought like only. an hour ago. It's exactly. Not You'd have to conjure it up. Yeah. It would be brought. It would be ushered forth by thought because yeah. it doesn't show up. It's not here. You can't smell it. You can't taste it. It has to be ushered forth into your little realm, your little porno theater by thought. Yeah. Which is what you used to say. You know, give me your problems for tomorrow. I'll take them, and you don't have to worry about them. Yes, exactly. I'll take all of your tomorrow's problems from you. Right. It's like tra- traveling with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a relief to give them up. You know, so. The thing is, is, if there's been a reliance, let's say, on intelligence for most of one's life, yeah. because the intelligence was good, it seemed to be scalpel-like and fine, it tends to be the blunt instrument that beats the shit out of you. Mm-hmm. See, that's where there's a surrender: is to give up your your uh, what you fabled system, that one sword that you think is worthy of the name sword, your intellect. Well, you're cutting your your own wrist with it, really. Yeah, you're too smart to get certain things. Mm-hmm. Intelligence is just another aspect of mind. No, no higher, no lower than anything else, yeah? But when relied upon, we relied upon, it's, it's holy grail as I know, you know? 
it feels like everything it comes in contact with, it scurries over it like with tentacles. Now it thinks it knows it by just doing a little, not realizing Dissection. it's giving all the meaning yeah. to that thing it's feeling up, so to speak. Yeah, it's just getting its own message back. Which is like in epistemology, in philosophy, you know, they talk about how we know what we know. But even there, you're already in the field of knowing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so are we done yet? I think that's are we it. done? I, if I could ask a follow-up question. You talked about uh, what I interpreted as the dog of alcoholism. Yeah. Well, it's just a picture. and I'm trying to right. paint a picture, yeah. Uh, and it sounded like... Uh, as long as that dog was running wild, the, the person couldn't focus on anything but that dog. Well, that's been my experience here, yes. Are, are there other, uh, in people that you have listened to and worked with, are there other dogs besides alcoholism that are just so... Yeah, there's definitely spiritual seeking mm-hmm. for some people. Yeah, is a dog. And that's really relentless because it's got like a noble collar around it. It's not like a mutt. Alcoholism is like a big fucking mutt. But uh, some of the Easy other dogs are very, they're like, uh, they've won the uh, what's Westminster Kennel Club uh, show. They look best at, have best at show, you know. They look like they're great spiritual seekers, but, but they're they still really in a mind. lot of angst. You know, their minds are agitated. The mind, not yeah, theirs. The mind's agitated in that state. But they have, there's so much pride they won't admit it, yeah? So I hear people call me and they, they just want to say like a human foible, but they can't just say, hey, I feel fucked today. They got to make a whole story around, oh, they want to get it out, they want to express it, but they don't want it to, they want to build, have this whole philosophy around it. Well, I'm not really that and I'm really clear about that, but listen to me. And I've had talks where people were doing this for the first five minutes and then they broke down and started crying and they started just telling me on a dog shit level what was bothering them and it was so much more relieving than all the yapping around it you know thinking you know spiritual pride like they 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 know something that 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 means to their conditioning that they shouldn't they should be immune to everything and so when it doesn't seem that's the case, they make they have to make this convoluted spiritual rationale instead of just saying, "Man, that guy cut me off and I threw him the bird." You know, so what? It wasn't, it's not you doing it, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I've seen it, man. I watched this person. He was calling me, and I, he went on for about five or ten minutes, and then I, the system broke down. He just started crying, and then he started sharing about what was underneath that whole facade. Yeah. See, that's how when, can, so that's like a dog, you know, <laughs> if you want to call it that. And when that dog, let's say you're in, let's say you're demonstrating the spaciousness of life as a temple, well then you've got a big temple dog that you got to make sure it's got water and it drinks a lot and food and you got to clean up its shit and you got to make excuses for it running around and eating people's shoes and therefore you're pretty freaking busy dealing with the consequences of that situation yeah i haven't found many people who could really entertain an invitation with that going on there may be many cases of it i haven't met many yeah <coughs> don't, I, hmm? don't we have to drop a lot to entertain i don't think there no. has to be anything but okay. if there is if it's, if there is a certain situation that that's the case, yeah. it's sort of like, yeah, you don't need to go to any meetings unless you do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's like the pail if of water. If you need to go, you better go. Is, is it like the pail of water for the fire, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you need to do something, you better do it. So if there's yeah. a fire... But there's no need to do it. If there's a fire, get a <laughs> exactly. pail of water, right? If there's a fire, it's best to get a pail of water. Right. Don't sit in there watching your arm burn saying there isn't... No arm. There is no arm. I'm not this arm. <laughs> you know, fucking give up that freaking idea and get some water. Yeah. And then Why something not? else will happen. There isn't a you to be ashamed of. You know? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? If your house is on fire, it's on fire, right? If there isn't a you, there ain't a you. It's not like there isn't a you only when you're really detached and beautiful and loving. And then there is a you. No. Which is why you said you wanted a piece of salad on your tooth. Yeah, right? yeah. There is a, see, <laughs> there isn't a you when you're the most biggest asshole of all there still isn't a you 
Oh, and there yeah. isn't a you when you're really yeah. f- blissfully engaged with oneness, yeah? There still isn't a you. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. before all that. It's the not before the not, right? So, well, so it's like not? the you trying to be a not you. It's really painful. <laughs> so why not? It's right? a real drag. Yeah. It doesn't work in there, and it won't admit it ain't working. <laughs> they just keep at it, you know? And it, there's just like, if they weren't so civilized, they'd be ripping people's throats. Whoever was talking, they'd say, I've had enough! <laughs> just rip that teacher's throat take, out. Take a look at religion over <laughs> you know the eons, mean? right? You know, I mean, they've had enough, yeah. but they they just drink their herbal tea and go home and read books again, and they just just fucking do something you like, go out, you know. That's how I see it. Who knows? Well, it could be worn as a heavy. Coat. So yeah, there's a lot of different dogs. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. There's some that've been recognized and others haven't been. Mm-hmm. So. But if the dog is really unruly, uh, you're gonna, there's going to be a lot of attention to it. And you're not going to have the attention. The interest and attention isn't going to be freed up to go to where other places. It will always be dragging that thing with it, you know. That's why, you know, with all the talks and everything, the thing that had the greatest effect on the action figure here was recovery. Yeah? That was the uh, the book of recovery. I've I've had more intimacy with that book than any other book. Yeah, mm-hmm. it described exactly my running program, and it described what happened that when that running program was shut off or started to diminish. It, it described it perfectly, what it was like to be me, and what it's going to be like when I realize I'm not that me, and so. You know, yeah, when it comes to manifestation, I think recovery uh, uh, is one of the is one of the most demonstrous demonstrative vehicles of manif- of expression here, of minds changing. I really in do. extreme ways, right? In I extreme mean, ways, so it's easy to read. They're like broad brushstrokes, yeah. man. Someone who was totally fucked is now sort of free free ranging. You know, they have a Happy they have joys. some space in their life. And uh, it's just an amazing thing to watch, and I've been watching it for 24 years. I haven't been in any, in any spiritual group for 24 years other than recovery, mm-hmm. if you want to call it a spiritual group. So it's been my community, and I have seen so much stuff happen. I've seen it in this, my own house here with the people that moved in. Some people moved in who were new in recovery, and they were fuming. They were the angriest person you know, and they were the last to know it. They didn't think they had any resentments because their mind had totally disassociated from everything. But that doesn't fucking work. And I've just watched, just by doing some simple way of life, showing up, you know, doing this, doing that, I've seen their minds become much more peaceful. It's just an incredible, what, transformation. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I know there are some... uh, you know, alcoholics with Buddhism, yeah. and they're still alcoholics. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that. Just putting a layer on it. Yeah, <clears throat> putting a layer on it. Well, I think we're coming to the end. I think this is the end. Yes, Mister Rod, Mister Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> we're gonna let Mikey, Mikey, to go away now. Mikey's so, got to go to school. We need a little... Become a nuclear isn't it, scientist. Isn't it a train that comes around in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood? He's like, <laughs> I had to sell the train. Visit. The this train's is a, gone. We, we, we don't have a stand. studio anymore. I've been... I'm, I'm, I'm living on the streets. My neighborhood is the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Life's done Mr. Rogers wrong. I'm on the streets. <laughs> he got a Zen bitch slap. He got That's, a major Zen bitch slap. Whatever and a couple of uh, pedophile charges no, also I probably. Hope not, yeah. No, I hope no, not. not Mr. Rogers. Not Mr. Rogers, no. Aww. That was Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. he was just in a theater. Yeah, yeah. He was in his own porno theater of his mind. Suffering, yeah. Yeah. I have to go get the Chewini next. Oh, good. Well, we're done, My eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think I'm ready to. I got to see this that guy. Was an hour and a half. Has it been? Yeah. Well, I hope he'll get something out of it, eh? Oh, that was really good. Oh, good. Did it work yeah. out? Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Top notch. My pleasure. No, it's fun. My pleasure, Michael. My Thank pleasure, you. too. Thanks. Thanks. It's always fun. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it again.